A few weeks ago, it seemed like every team in the Eastern Conference had a shot at making it to the NBA Finals. But then, something pretty remarkable happened. Damian Lillard joined the Milwaukee Bucks. That move completely shifted the odds in favor of the Milwaukee Bucks, making them the top dogs. And just when you thought that was it, Drew Holiday pulled off a surprise trade to the Boston Celtics. So, in a way, it feels like we're in for a two-horse race here. And this isn't good for the Eastern Conference. Why? Stay tuned to find out. Before we dive in, you can significantly impact this channel by simply liking this video and hitting that subscribe button. Your support means a lot. Thanks. With that said, let's get started. The Eastern Conference title, right, is because of the offense. The Bucks were 15th in offense, and they're adding Dame Lillard, who I believe is around 6th all-time in made threes. That offense really struggled. They won games because they were a great team. But now you insert one of the best perimeter scorers in, that we've seen in the NBA, an all-75 type of guy in Dame. That offense goes up. Maybe the defense drops a little bit. Right. They did not lose much, but they gained a lot, especially when it comes to championship pedigree. Times out of 10, where you have a shot to win the title. The Celtics are better today with Drew Holiday than they were two days ago without him. He replaces a lot of the defensive identity that they could lean on with Marcus Smart. Yes, those are just the two teams in the Eastern Conference right now. The week before training camp usually doesn't have much drama or excitement. But the Celtics and the Bucks decided to break that trend by making some big moves that are bound to shake up the Eastern Conference. It all started when the Trailblazers refused to budge on Damian Lillard. They weren't interested in any of the offers coming from the Miami Heat, so Lillard's camp began looking at other options. That's when the Bucks and Nets entered the picture. In a bold move, Trailblazers GM Joe Cronin orchestrated a trade that sent Lillard to the Bucks. In return, the Blazers got Drew Holiday, a draft pick, and some swaps. But the thing was that Holiday was never meant to play for the Blazers. They're in rebuilding mode with a young backcourt, so they plan to use his contract to bring in more young talent and draft picks. And just two days later, Cronin flipped Holiday to the Celtics for Malcolm Brogdon, Robert Williams, and a couple of first round picks. Before this Lillard trade, the Bucks had already been making some notable moves. They hired Adrian Griffin as their head coach to replace Mike Bodenholzer, re-signed Chris Middleton, their second highest scorer, and secured Brooke Lopez as their defensive anchor. Giannis Antetokounmpo recently stated in an interview that he wasn't sure if he'd sign a contract extension with the Bucks unless he saw that everyone was fully committed to winning a championship and willing to make sacrifices just like he does. So trading away Holiday, who's an all-star and a top-notch defender, for the high-scoring Lillard sends a clear message. The Bucks are all in for a championship run. It's a bold move that underlines their title or bust mentality. On the other hand, the Boston Celtics made a big move by bringing Drew Holiday to their team. Their GM, John Horst, really calculated this one because Holiday is known as one of the NBA's top perimeter defenders. He's got the speed and strength to hassle quick point guards and shut down elite wings. The guy was a key part of the Milwaukee Bucks' stellar defense for the past few seasons. At first, when Holiday got traded to the Trailblazers, there was some hope among Bucks fans that he'd stay out west, but those hopes were crushed when he got sent to the Celtics. Holiday's defensive skills fit like a glove with what the Celtics needed. He's the kind of elite defender they can put up against Damian Lillard, the Bucks' new superstar. Holiday is no stranger to hounding ball handlers way out on the court and getting them frustrated. Now, it's clear that the upcoming season is shaping up to be a head-to-head -head battle between these two teams, the Bucks and the Celtics. Just check out the odds and you'll see how closely matched they are, leaving the other Eastern Conference teams in the dust. Even the Miami Heat, who made it to the NBA Finals last year, don't even come close. The Heat have a strong belief that they can always snag top talent, thanks to team president Pat Riley. But this summer, things haven't gone their way. They were eyeing Damian Lillard, a guy who could have been a perfect fit with Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. Instead, they watched as the Bucks and Celtics landed star guards. Meanwhile, some key players from Miami's impressive playoff run, like Gabe Vincent and Max Struess, ended up signing with the Lakers and the Cavaliers in free agency. 
The Miami Heat brought back Josh Richardson on a friendly contract to fill the gap left by Gabe Vincent. Plus, they're changing things up by moving Duncan Robinson into Max Struess's role as a floor spacer and scorer. Robinson held that spot before Struess stepped up big time over the past season. On top of that, they're keeping an eye on the development of second-year forward Nikola Jovic and rookie Jaime Jaquez Jr. Both were potential trade pieces for a guard, but ended up staying put. But the truth is that, despite these moves, the Heat have faced a bit of a setback this summer. Make no mistake, Jimmy Butler and coach Eric Spolstra are forces to be reckoned with. But the road to a fourth conference finals appearance in five seasons just got a lot tougher. Now, let's shift our focus to the Cleveland Cavaliers. They made a comeback to the playoffs after a five-year hiatus, but it wasn't the triumphant return they'd hoped for. They got bounced out in five games by the New York Knicks, and it was clear that their lack of playoff experience and struggles with perimeter shooting were hurting them. To fix these issues, the Cavs have made shooting a top priority this offseason. They brought in Max Struess from the Heat and George Niang from the 76ers to add more offensive versatility. This should prevent them from shuffling through different players in the fifth spot alongside key players like Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, Evan Mobley, and Jared Allen. Plus, Struess and Niang's presence should make it easier for Cleveland to play small ball, a tactic they struggled with last season. Looking ahead, the big question in Cleveland is whether they can convince Donovan Mitchell to sign a contract extension next summer. He'll be just a year away from free agency, and it all starts with the team's performance. Improving on last season's first round exit is a must, and Struess and Niang are here to help with that. But a lot also depends on Evan Mobley's offensive development. He's a beast on defense, but we all know the Cleveland Cavaliers cannot match the likes of Milwaukee and Boston in the Eastern Conference. What about the New York Knicks? It's been a relatively quiet offseason for them. They did make a smart move by signing Dante DiVincenzo in free agency, adding him to the mix alongside his Villanova teammates Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart. But all in all, they decided to stand pat and it's not a bad call. The Knicks had a breakthrough last season, making it to the second round of the playoffs by beating Cleveland. A lot of that success was thanks to Jalen Brunson, their free agent signing from the previous year. It gave hope to the legions of Knicks fans in the tri-state area that maybe, just maybe, a brighter future was finally on the horizon. In the meantime, if the Knicks can build on the momentum from last season, where they won their first playoff series since 2013, the allure of playing at Madison Square Garden could make a resurgence. But let's face it, the odds of that happening are on the low side. In fact, it's becoming increasingly clear that there are only two teams that can realistically dream of leading the Eastern Conference, and those are the Bucks and the Celtics. And the scary part is, this isn't just a one-year thing. This block could last for several years. Reports suggest that Porzingis is working on an extension with the Celtics, and Holiday might be doing the same. The Bucks seem to be on the verge of extending Lillard and Giannis, which could leave the other Eastern teams out of contention for quite some time. So what's the game plan for the rest of the Eastern Conference? Well, if you're the Detroit Pistons or the Orlando Magic, it's a pretty straightforward answer. Develop your young talents, aim to make the playoffs, and gain that valuable experience. They're in the early stages of their journey, and championship talk isn't on the table for them just yet. But what about teams like the Knicks, the 76ers, the Bulls, and others? What's their move? They might be hoping that things don't work out for the Bucks and the Celtics, because the reality is, right now, they stand little chance of winning it all in the East. It's a challenging puzzle for these teams, and they'll need to find creative solutions to stay competitive in the shadow of the Eastern Giants. A team like the New York Knicks that has been waiting for the right moment to make a big move and they've held off on pulling the trigger with players like Mitchell, Beal, Lillard, or Holiday in recent years. But what if a superstar like Giannis Antetokounmpo or Joel Embiid becomes available next summer? What if things go south for Cleveland and Donovan Mitchell, just a year away from free agency, decides it's time to move on? If a disgruntled superstar suddenly hits the trade market, the Knicks, with their combination of draft assets and players under contract, are poised to make an enticing offer and challenge the two Eastern Giants in years to come. What are your thoughts on this? Is the Eastern Conference now a two-way battle? Feel free to share your opinions in the comment section below. 
See you in the next video.